No one has taken the idea of musical cybernetics further than the German electronic band Kraftwerk. Other synthesists try to humanize their machines, or at least give lip service to the idea. But Kraftwerk's Ralph Hooder talks about a merger at the man-machine interface. There's no way of um, going back. No. For us, we are completely um, interfaced, so to speak, with our music machines. That's what the man-machine stands for, Kraftwerk. Artists and electronic sound. The music of yesterday may never be the same. The music of tomorrow may be sounds we've never heard. We live in an electronic world. These are the sound shapers of our era. Totally wired. It's more a realistic type of... Um, interrelation or like you said interface between us and the machines because we don't put the machines on, on a higher level or big level or ourselves onto it's neither glorification of ourselves nor of the machines i think it's more about a friendship to get in tune or a friendship relation with your environment rather than feel dissociated and always being uh, uh, you know then you feel completely dissociated from your environment then you have this negative edit attitudes all the time. Rolf Hooder and Florian Schneider joined forces in the late 1960s. From the beginning, their music reflected the industrial environment of Dusseldorf, West Germany, where they lived. Their music is more streamlined and icy now, and parallels the progression from machines to computers. But on their first two records as Kraftwerk, you can hear the factories clanking and belching away. Certain, certain sounds also that are very harsh. There's different levels of brutal sounds, or more gentle sounds, machine-like sounds, depending on the psychology of these different machines. talks about the psychology of machines as if they had feelings, neuroses, and phobias, just like us. It's all part of the Kraftwerk rhetoric that began in 1970 when they first got together. They called their studio Kling Klong, which means sound noise. It was an assemblage of electronic odds and ends, much like the classical electronic studios of Otto Luning and Karlheinz Stockhausen. When we uh, got together our uh, Kling Klong studio in 1970, we started with tape recorders and oscillators and um, feedback and echo chambers, all kinds of tapes and all kinds of things. Basically very simplistic things because music is just, or sound is just one part of what we do. We are a lot working in instruments, building instruments, you know, most of the things you see we made ourselves because otherwise we couldn't play it. So it, it has to be this way for us. There's no other way, because we couldn't go into a shop and say, I want this, I want that, put the money down and say, with this, I can play that. We don't find anywhere what we want to do. We have to make it ourselves. So we are very amateurish about the whole thing we make. We don't wait for somebody to make something. We, we use our own, even if it's not the best, it doesn't matter. If we make it our own way, then it's special. Kraftwerk's music grew with the electronics explosion of the mid-70s. 
Not only were synthesizers becoming more readily available, but even non-musical devices were making their own electronic sounds. There are very good instruments everywhere. Airports and telephones and, I mean, electronic sounds are all around us, so I feel it very uh, in tune with today's, it's the music of today, there's no question, for me at least. Today they use the sounds of pocket calculators. Back in 1975, they used the mechanical sound of a car engine, turning the key in the ignition of their international hit, Autobahn. I have a lot of recordings of different machines. Like on Autobahn, we picked up my old Volkswagen record it and uh... Every series composer and musician in the 20th century has had to find their own definition of what constitutes music. In their manifesto for Musica Futurista, the Italian futurists wanted to bring the machine and the victorious kingdom of electricity into music. Crawford espouses these goals and subscribes to Edgar Varese's idea that music is the organization of sound. I think music, as we call it, is just a form of organized sound. So basically, we, we have our studio, it's called Klinklang, that's the German word for sound. That's what we're into, sounds, environmental sounds or mu musical sounds, any, anything. We have random notes, we play a couple of, sometimes we let the machines run for themselves, we just set them up, or don't set them up, just see how the circuits just stimulate themselves, inner feedback, and then they sometimes play some wonderful things. The Crawford jargon places everything in mechanistic or electronic terms, even their minds and ears. And what goes into those ears is often a direct contradiction to their own mechanized sounds. Crawford often listens to silence. They don't allow any music to be played in concert halls before their performances. And it's been reported that Crawford snips the wires to Muzak systems in elevators that they ride in. We have like two microphones in the ears and one cassette recorder in the brain where we store certain information, but oh, we, just, we just want to have a little silence and keep the uh, turn down, especially in America where everything is always music around in elevators, hotels and everywhere, airports, noise. There's so much noise and so much uh, sound pollution. I think we we extremely uh, thoughtful about silence. Tune up your ears and then... Mm, Express. <laughs> 
They glorify their image of cold, calculating technoids, moving on stage like robots, and often letting the synthesizers run on automatic, while surrogate models of the band stand motionless above them. According to Hooter, the impetus for their music isn't physical, but cerebral. The only interface that Crawford needs are the glistening knobs, buttons, and computer readouts of their machines. Well, when we turn the knobs and the switches, and when we touch the sensitive keyboards or the uh, numeric keyboards, the numbers, it's just the same interface. I mean, it's just that these computer instruments, they're much more sensitive than the others. They're, they're not so physical, but more, uh, it takes more thinking to actually play them. And then you get physical maybe by just switching a couple of knobs. But that's just the result of a uh, thinking process. Because basically we stand around and turning knobs and switches. And I think the physical side of the music is what comes out of the loudspeakers. Then the energy level that's more stimulated by the actual... It's more like a sensitive finger ballet that we play on the instruments. For a group who talks about their music in such intellectual terms and avoids any overt displays of emotion, Crawford has been surprisingly successful at moving bodies across disco floors. Their Man Machine album crossed over into the disco charts and changed the shape of R&B for the next several years. We do a lot of dancing. We, sometimes the weekend we go dancing. Discotheques in Europe, we go... We have some... Dusseldorf is not far from Holland or France, so some, sometimes we travel and then we go to discotheques in Dusseldorf or Paris. Then we dance and we like uh, mechanistic music with repetitive beat patterns. Crawford exploit what they believe to be the ambiguity between humans and machines. Instead of being cold and unexpressive, Hooter sees computers and synthesizers as being more sensitive and having a wider range of expression than anything before them. He thinks they've already eliminated the need for conventional instruments. Because we are not so certain what is human, or what's supposed to be human. I think that's a projection. Our music is very sensitive. The, the electronic instrumentation is just much more sensitive to... You have a much wider range of expression than with uh, so-called traditional instruments. They are quite outdated today. You, everything has been said on, on those type of instruments. So if you want to make music of today, you better use the instruments of today, I think. Otherwise, it's a museum. And the synthesizer just has the complete sound range, you know. You can have any sound from within the audio range from 20 to 20,000 hertz or something. And so you find also a lot of your own limitations. It doesn't give any pre preconceived things to hang on to. It doesn't help you to hang on to something. It's just there. And it's just like a white piece of paper and whatever you put on it you have, has to come from yourself. And you have to be much more modest about your own creativity or things and start with very simplistic, basic things. Whereas when you pick up a, a traditional instrument like a piano, it has already a preset sound. It sounds always like a piano, no matter how good or bad you play. You hit one note, it sounds piano. With a synthesizer, it doesn't do that. You have to make up that one note. And therefore, they're very hard to play sometimes. Kraftwerk's influence has been enormous. Nearly every contemporary electronic artist will cite them as an influence and they've spawned a whole generation of musicians who use the Crawford vocabulary to make music. Well, that's just what we have been working in for so many years, and, and um, all these amateur bands in Germany. Lots of new young bands coming, who, who start directly now with synthesizers and everything. Also England, France, of course, Italy, new group coming up, making their own records.
This music we're listening to isn't by Kraftwerk, but by a young British group called Depeche Mode. They're part of a new generation of musicians who have taken the sounds, attitudes, and rhythms of Kraftwerk to forge a style of music called synthipop or electropop, or simply another wrinkle in new wave dance music. Depeche Mode's success is due to their infectious melodies, danceable rhythms, and the sort of androgynous good looks that grace the covers of teenage fan magazines. But they were also a novelty. They were one of the few young all-synthesizer groups around in 1981 and 82. Now, Depeche Mode is only one of many all-electronic bands, and one of the least sophisticated. They're not the sound makers or innovators of Kraftwerk, or craftsmen like Thomas Dolby or Ultravox. They're pop musicians, standing in a line with the likes of Rudy Valley, Frank Sinatra, Fabian, Herman's Hermits, and the Bay City Rollers. But their music is a popular distillation of the most advanced concepts in music technology, and more importantly, musical thought in the 20th century. Kraftwerk, on the other hand, might just be something entirely beyond categories. Totally Wired, Artists and Electronic Sound was produced by John DiLiberto and Kimberly Haas for radio station WXPN in Philadelphia. Funding was provided by Sequential Circuits Incorporated, makers of electronic keyboard instruments, Yamaha Corporation, makers of electronic and acoustic instruments, the Pennsylvania Humanities Council, and the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts.